And so one of the other questions that I get frequently is how does engaging with a robotic system like the Modus Hand help sort of amplify my recovery? And this is a very good question. It's a very um, uh, sort of tuned question and it's appropriate one. And really it boils down to um, gaining access to the fundamental drivers of neuro recovery. And when we look at the gold standard for sort of therapeutic options to help people improve their upper or lower extremity function, it boils down to a program called sort of constraint induced movement programs or um, movement therapy that is, or repetitive task practice like programs. And both of these tasks, both of these approaches, again, boil further down into the process of just doing motions um, with your um, residual cortex in your hand um, and also trying to get feedback. And this is important because when we are trying to relearn how to use our limbs, we have to basically recapitulate the process by which we learn to move in the first place. And that is um, you do a task, you recruit a bunch of neurons, and then you are, um, you are tasked with understanding whether or not that was a good movement or a bad movement. Um, in the event it was a bad movement, um, it didn't complete the task or it didn't achieve the goal that you set out to achieve. Um, you then recruit a different group of neurons until you achieve that goal. Once you achieve that goal, in order to stabilize that network for, um, for you to be able to recruit that long term, for instance, if I'm trying to pick up this cup of coffee and I want to be able to do this repeatedly, I have to do this motion over and over and over again for that network performance, that motor training to become stable. So I can, whether, whether or not it's day or night, um, today or tomorrow or the next day, I can recruit those same neurons and then achieve that task. But in order to do that, you have to do a number of repetitions. And we're talking on the order of hundreds of repetitions per day in order to generate a stable motor network. And um, this is very true for the initial development of, of movement as well as, as it is for following neurologic injury. Following neurologic injury can be a bit more complicated because not only do you have to relearn to use the, the um, perform the task, but oftentimes our sensory information is faulty too or impaired as well. And so by nature of having a robotic system, you can um, gain access to augmented sensory feedback by nature of having a visual display. And that visual display can help tell you whether or not you did something correct or incorrect. And conditioned on trying to do the correct motions, you will then learn over time to recruit the appropriate sets of neurons. And again, after hundreds and hundreds of repetitions, those networks become more stable, and then you can perform those tasks outside of the robotic systems. And so it really boils down to the concepts of the systems they are designed to help you achieve um, those high doses of movement that are required to train your brain optimally, while also giving you the appropriate biofeedback or the learning stimulus, the knowledge of your performance, to then ensure that those networks are the correct ones that you want to recruit.